That is a very loud train horn. Howdy folks. We're gonna jump back on this Oliver OC46 project. I need to replace the hydraulic valve and fix the carburetor. It doesn't run quite right. Uh, but I ran into a little snag yesterday when I tried to start it up. It uh, started just fine, ran fine for a few seconds, and then I heard a pop, and then there was just engine oil everywhere. Well, I thought what happened is it blew a hose up to the oil filter base, but it actually blew out the oil filter canister itself. So that's the first time I've ever seen that happen. Yeah, pretty crazy. It's still got some on the dipstick, so that's a good sign. Yeah, we're full. Well, I can't imagine we hurt anything. It's my fault. I was wearing a brand new hoodie which a viewer sent me, by the way. Thank you very much. So I was tempting fate just by having a new piece of clothing anywhere near this machine. Oh, folks that's pretty wild it's almost like the internet was right well, it seems to start fine and run fine kind of until it warms up and then it's way too rich so I think what happened is there was some junk in this hard line and it just sucked it into the carburetor I cleaned this when we first got it started, but that's been, what, over a year ago now. Well, that's not a good sign. Now, a lot of people are speculating that the electric fuel pump was putting out too much pressure but it shouldn't, it's a, it's a low pressure pump designed specifically for carburetors. And this carburetor was designed to work with a mechanical fuel pump that puts out about the same pressure. So I, I can't see that being the issue, but you just never know. I suppose this is a Marvel, Marvel Shebler carburetor, or possibly a Zenith. Either way, these things are super, super simple.
So this does have the rubber tipped float valve, which is good. Nope. That's in there permanently. Nope, not coming out of there either. Well, I don't know folks, I don't see anything really wrong here. I'm gonna clean this up, put it back together and we'll see what happens. The only thing I really found that was a problem, I think, is this bowl gasket, especially right here where it was sealing around the high-speed jet. So I made a new one. Hopefully it, hopefully it helps our problems here. I like it. Almost destroyed the most important tool in the shop. Well, the main project is to replace this hydraulic loader control valve. The center spool is cracked. I tried to kind of patch it up by putting this shaft collar on it. Oh, that doesn't work at all. Hang on a minute. Let's try this one. There we go. Oh, I need to get one of those actual plastic cap kits. One of these days. Anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, we got to replace the valve. The, the spool's cracked. I tried to seal it up with the shaft collar. That didn't work. As soon as the oil gets hot, it just, it just spews oil everywhere. Ah, budge. Well, she got me.
That's fun. I mentioned that I hate hydraulics. <laughs> just, I absolutely do. There's just, there's no way to work on this stuff without this. An Exxon Valdez style oil slick. All right, I better patch that up. I'll bring you guys back in a minute. All right, folks, it's time for the chin wagon part of the video. I've got three hydraulic valves here, the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is what came off the machine. It's made by a company called Hydreco, which I've never heard of before. The problem with this valve is it was open. It got water in it. That water froze and it cracked the center spool. I think it may have also cracked the body itself. It's pretty corroded inside. It's actually amazing that it works at all. Generally speaking, these valves cannot be repaired. The spools, and bores are very precisely machined and lapped to size. There are no seals in this. Well, that's not true. There's a dust seal on the outside here, but generally there are no seals inside the valve body. Just the tight fit between the spool and the body is all that keeps the hydraulic oil from leaking out. So once you get some wear on the spools or wear in the bores, there's nothing you can do. There are companies out there, if you have enough money, who can make you a new spool or they can chrome plate your original spools and build them up and then machine the body to fit that larger spool. That is very costly, well beyond the cost of just replacing the valve in this case. So our first option as far as replacing this valve was this guy here. This is a used valve. I actually got this from my dad. It's off of a John Deere crawler of some sort. This is a very good quality valve. It has a joystick control. It would be fantastic. Unfortunately, the layout is all wrong for us. So this valve is actually meant to be installed upside down so that the, the ports are on the bottom. And it's also backwards. So it's supposed to, I think, the valve itself is supposed to be behind the control lever which is backwards of how our machine was set up. Just the logistics of using that valve, it's not worth it. So what we're gonna use is this guy here. This is a Prince RD series valve. This is a US made valve. It has load checks. It has the correct flow rating. It has everything that we need for this machine. So how do we pick a replacement control valve? Oh, come on. Why am I getting a phone call from Strasbourg, Alsace? I believe that's in France. What was I saying? Yeah, how do you select a replacement control valve? You gotta know three things. The maximum flow rating, the maximum pressure rating, and whether it's open center or closed center. Beyond that, it's mostly about packaging. You know, getting it to fit where you need it to fit and work with the hoses or lines that you have. There's some other features that you may want. We'll talk about that later. In our case, we have a 17 gallon per minute system at 1200 PSI and it's open center. So the flow rating is mostly a function of the size of the valve itself. There's not really anything you can do to increase that beyond the rated capacity. This one's good for 25 gallons per minute. That should be more than sufficient for our uses. And that should be fine for any you know, basic loader application that you guys are likely to run into. It has an adjustable pressure relief valve here. This valve, like a lot of others, can be converted from open center to closed center by replacing this plug. So this plug here is at the end of the return circuit and in the open center configuration it just allows the fluid to go back to the tank. In a closed center configuration it blocks the fluid so that there is no flow back to the tank and then you can also install what's called a power beyond sleeve, and that allows the oil to go to another valve and then from that valve back to the tank. So the open center versus closed center part is probably the most confusing. In open center, you have constant flow and variable pressure. In a closed center system, you have constant pressure and variable flow. 
So open center, you have a fixed displacement pump. Typically it'd be a gear pump, like on our crawler. And it puts out so many gallons per minute, no matter what. That oil gets circulated through the valve and back to the tank anytime that the pump is turning. In order to build pressure, when you pull the lever back, it actually restricts the flow of the oil back to the tank and that increases the pressure and then that pressure gets diverted to one of these ports and out to the cylinder. As soon as the lever goes back to neutral, the path back to the tank is opened back up, the pressure goes back down basically to zero. In a closed center system, there is no return to the tank and the pump has a variable displacement feature. It's typically like an axial piston pump, kind of like an AC compressor. And the swash plate inside the pump can angle to keep the pressure constant. So when you pull the valve and divert the oil, the pressure towards the cylinder, the pump changes that swash plate to maintain that constant pressure. And when it does that, it increases the flow and the oil gets sent out to the cylinder. As soon as you release the lever, it goes back to the neutral position. It blocks that flow of oil. The swash plate goes back to neutral and the pressure, the pressure stays the same, but the flow goes back down basically to zero. Well, there's pluses and minuses with both systems. We don't have to get into that too much. Typically on older, smaller, simpler machines, you're gonna find open center hydraulics. That would be things like forklifts, tractors, smaller tractors, compact tractors, older tractors, things like dozers that have pretty simple hydraulic systems, they're oftentimes going to be open center. A lot of industrial equipment, you know, plant equipment is going to be open center. Closed center you're going to find on larger, more sophisticated machines, excavators, you know, things like that, maybe some larger tractors. To use this valve with a loader, we also need a load check. And it's kind of confusing how it works, so I'll try my best to explain it. Imagine that you had a bucket full of dirt, and you raised it up, and then you stopped. And then you wanted to raise it up a little bit higher. When you stop, the valve goes to neutral. There's still pressure here going out to the cylinder to hold the load up, but the pump pressure basically goes to zero because there's no restriction on its flow. When you go to raise the load again, you shift the spool and that starts to restrict the flow and it starts to send that flow back out towards this port. The problem is the pressure in the pump may not come up fast enough to match the pressure of the cylinder pushing back on the valve. And what can happen is the load can actually drop. So to prevent that, we have a load check, which is basically a check valve. And it's pilot operated and it basically holds the pressure in the cylinder until the pressure in the pump matches it. And once the pump pressure matches this pressure, it overcomes the check valve and allows you to continue raising the load. That's very important for a loader. It's not important for things like log splitters or, you know, where there's no starting load on the cylinder. This valve also has a float position. So you push the lever forward and it lowers the bucket. You push it further forward and it locks in and it opens up both of these ports back to the tank. It basically means that the cylinder can't build pressure on either side, so it can float wherever it wants to go. And it's only the weight of the bucket that holds it down. There's no hydraulic pressure. It's handy for you know, plowing snow or maybe scooping some wood chips up off of a concrete pad, somewhere where you don't want the bucket to dig in and, and scrape and scour. It is a nice feature. That's it. This is a good valve. My, my advice would be that you get what you pay for. I know there's a lot of cheap Chinese valves out there. I just, I would not trust them as far as I could throw them. This is a, you know, made in USA valve from a known manufacturer. That would be my suggestion. You know, get a Prince or a Gresson or a Parker or, you know, something that you can, that you can trust. This one also has NPT ports, half inch NPT ports, which is good for us. We should be able to just move our, our fittings right over. You can get it with O-ring boss or you know, whatever 
type of fitting that you want. You just have to specify that when you order the valve. We bought this one from Surplus Center. It cost about $260. You can get these valves from you know, a good hydraulic supplier like Bomb Hydraulics or Surplus Center or, or somewhere like that. Yeah, let's get it installed, see if it works. The hardest part of this whole job is figuring out how to mount the new valve. So that's the space where the old valve was. That was the hole for the return. So on the new valve, I've got a nipple and an elbow and this short piece of pipe. This came off the old valve. So we're gonna stick that right down here in the same hole where the old valve returned. Come on, boy, these things are awkward. Anyway, we're gonna attach a couple of brackets to the bottom of it, like so. It's gotta go like that, right? Yeah. Oh, except for the holes don't line up. You'd think I would have checked that before I turned the camera on. But I didn't. That's embarrassing. I'll be back. There we go. Now, set that aside. On here. Mount these two plates. Like so. And then I've got two bars to go across. Like so. There we go. Now the valve with the brackets. It's gonna mount like so. That's pretty decent, I think. So we'll weld the pipe to the plate and then we can seal on the bottom side of that plate, keep the water out of the tank. We'll seal around the threads of the bolts the old bolts on the old valve body, they had copper washers on them. It's kind of crazy. Anyway, I think that's going to work. Let's see if we got room. Yeah, we got room to move all the levers. The inlet side shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, let's weld it up. Ah, dang it. Might be time for a new pair of welding gloves.
Oh, can we get one more? We're committed now. Come on. Oh. We might not have enough slack. Little bit of rejiggering here and we got enough slack. Let's see if we can turn this just a hair more. Oh God. I guess not. That's pretty good. It's better than what they had before. I'm not sure what the, what the rationale was here. They went from three quarter down to half inch into that valve, but the new valve is three quarter straight through so we can get rid of all this garbage. All right, folks, I'm pretty happy with that. We do have some extra slack in the loader hoses because that was previously on the far right. Now it's on the far left, so I don't know. We'll tie it up or something. And then this one's kind of tight, so I don't know, we'll figure it out. Anyway, tomorrow, We'll try it out. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't leak because I'm getting real tired of hydraulic oil all over my floor.
All right, folks, it works. Hoses are in the right spot, no major leaks. The only problems we have in the float position, that lever is right up next to the hose. So we may have to put an elbow or something in that if it's gonna be a problem. I don't know, you don't use that very often, so maybe it's no big deal. The other problem is that the relief valve here, it can only be adjusted to 1500 PSI. And I believe our system is Oh man, 1300 or 1400, something like that. So Prince sells a, a low pressure relief valve. You have to swap out this whole cartridge. So I'll order that and we'll swap that out. But otherwise we're good to go. I'm pretty happy with it. All right, folks, I think that's it. How to select and install a replacement loader control valve. Yeah, I think we're done with the Oliver OC46 project. Like for real this time. I'm going to send it home. It's been here long enough. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.